This is Brett of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, we're doing the Gillette or Stork test. Now, this is a sacroiliac joint dysfunction test, and it is a palpatory test, which we know means reliability could be questionable. But of the, of the sacroiliac joint tests, this one is definitely one of the better ones, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple tips that will hopefully increase your reliability. I'm gonna have my friend Melissa come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate. Now, what we're gonna do in this test is try to determine whether her sacroiliac joint is moving. And if you just think about it that way, all we're doing is testing to make sure that both sacroiliac joints are moving and moving equally, I think we could get reliability up a little higher than what the research has said. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna have Melissa face away from me. Take a step back for me, would you? All right, now you guys do have to be a little careful with the clothing situation here. Obviously, if somebody's in jeans, your palpation is going to be far less accurate than if somebody is in gym clothes. As much as I possibly can, I try to get my patients and clients to be wearing, you know, tank tops and yoga pants and like gym shorts or basketball shorts so that I'm not trying to palpate through anything really dense or thick. So what I'm gonna find here is I'm gonna find her PSIS. All right, and if you guys don't have a lot of practice finding somebody's PSIS, you can start by finding the top of their iliac crest and just reaching around until you find the little notches and realize her posterior superior iliac spine are much closer together than her ASIS are. Your ASIS are like this, your PSIS are much closer to your lumbar spine. Usually your PSIS are also just superior and lateral to those two little dimples you'll see back here when somebody like bends over and their pants creep down a little bit, right? You guys know where those dimples are if you go just kind of in that area, just superior and lateral, usually the PSIS are in there. Once I find her PSIS and I'm really sure about it, I'm then gonna take one finger and put it there, and the other finger I'm either gonna find S2, so the spine of the sacrum, or I could find the sacral base, and then on the side I'm palpating, I'm gonna have Melissa just go ahead and lift that leg up to like 90 degrees of hip flexion, right? So I'm gonna have her do that for me a few times. Can you do that? Like you know, a few times nice and slow. And one of a couple of things will happen. Either I'll feel no motion, I'll feel like her sacrum moves superior rather than inferior. So if she's lifting this leg, you guys can think about your biomechanics a little bit here, her pelvis should kinda come down this way. If instead I feel like she tilts up this way and I don't feel a lot of motion between the PSIS and the sacral base or sacral spine, then I know that that side's not moving particularly well. I'm then going to test that against her other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and find PSIS, find sacral base or find S2, whatever I'm comfortable with, and then I'm gonna go ahead and have her march on that side. All right, and I feel a little bit of motion, I can feel her PSIS dropping down into my thumb on this side, all right. And since my client has no idea what I'm doing, if I'm not sure, I'm gonna go back to the other side, right? Let me try that again. Go ahead and do that again. All right, good, left leg. Yeah, and I feel like on this side, I, I, I don't feel any motion in her sacral base, and I feel like her whole pelvis, when she lifts up this leg, like tilts this way, right? So they don't feel equal, right? Do this side, so this side, no motion, this side tilts up, and then this side, I'm gonna do it again. This side, PSIS definitely drops down, and I can feel like motion between PSIS and sacrum. I feel like my fingers are doing this a little bit, right? Like this thumb's moving forward, All right? One more time, one more time, good. So as you keep doing this, and you start to get a little bit of a, internal frame of reference with all of the patients that you've seen of what this test is supposed to feel like, I think you'll notice that when I said I felt motion on this side, but this side tended to be a little stiffer and her pelvis tended to hike up as she went into hip flexion, you guys would agree with me that this side sounds stiffer and this side sounds like it's moving better. That's all I'm gonna pull from this exam, actually. Right, so I would go ahead and mark down that she has a positive Gillette test or a positive stork test on her left side, on her stiff side, which from a 
clinical decision-making perspective, what intervention would I do? Maybe I think she's gonna use some sacroiliac joint mobilizations on her left side. Or if I think she's really hypermobile on her right side, maybe I'm thinking, oh man, I need to give her some, some glute activation because I know my glute max is one of my primary stabilizers of the SI joint. All right. So guys, let me go ahead and have you turn back this way. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to step around front just to give you guys an idea of where my thumbs were. All right. So I had fingers here at PSIS and one here like at her sacral base or you could even go on spine of the scapula. As she lifts this leg, what I'm looking for is does this move down this way? And am I feeling some motion between my two fingers this way? The common signs that you'll feel with stiffness is you won't feel as much motion between your fingers. You'll feel like they move together. And this hip, as she goes into hip flexion, will go up, right? Maybe just a little bit, right? So that's, that, that doesn't feel like a lot of motion and I feel like she's going up, all right? And then I would go to the other side and as soon as she went into hip flexion, I would go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I feel some, some play back and forth between my fingers. I don't feel like they're necessarily moving together. And usually, if, it's, if she has good motor control on this side and good mobility, you won't feel the, the pelvis hike up. In fact, the PSIS on this side, because she's going into a posterior pelvic tilt, will actually drop down. All right. So that's... That's it. That is the Gillette test. That is the Stork test. I think a lot of people try to get way too complicated with this test and be like, well, I felt the sacrum go anterior and I felt the sacrum rotate this way. And I, 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 I leave all that alone. The more complicated the test gets, the more reliability starts dropping. Right? And I know there's some expert palpators out there and, and I know there's people out there with better palpation skills than me, but we still have to think, how can we make this as reliable as possible? And I think if you just compare signs, you look for which side is stiffer. That's your positive side. And for the record, guys, uh, sacroiliac joint dysfunction is almost always asymmetrical. Another sign that you might think in the back of your head that's a little weird is if you feel like both sides are stiff, something is probably wrong and you should probably retest that. But if you just look for the stiffer side, and then if we add a another layer on top of that, Usually the stiffer side is one with no motion between your two points that you're palpating. Your fingers move together and that side tends to hike up. The side with more motion, you get more play between your two fingers. They don't tend to move together and your PSIS moves down, right? So this would be the mobile side, the side that goes up and your fingers move together. That would be the positive side. Again, I wouldn't go any further than that. The only reason I'm going to use the stork test is to try to figure out which side do I need to mobilize and which side do I need to stabilize. Thank you, Melissa. I hope you guys enjoyed this test.